Hey everybody, Norm over here, and we just got in a bunch of really cool guitars, some of which were in my warehouse uh, that I had sold a number of years ago, and I was able to do a deal with a friend of mine, and I was able to get them. Uh, this being a 1959 ES-355. Uh, it's factory mono, which is really cool, you know, quite rare. This has a double white coil PAF and a zebra black and white coil PAF. Uh, the guy who had it previously took the pickup covers off and uh, lost them. So, uh, but the guitar is in very nice shape. There's some little bit of wear on the back of the neck, uh, but it's a really great guitar, one of the rarest guitars. And 355s that are mono are extremely rare. So um, this is a beautiful example. I'm really happy to have this in the store again. It's just a really fantastic guitar. And we'll probably do a guitar of the day uh, with it very shortly. So a few things I just wanted to talk about. Um, first of all, last night I saw the Joe Bonamassa documentary called Guitar Man. And it's fantastic. And it really is done well. And I've known Joe since he was 12, and a lot of people think that he was kind of an overnight sensation, but he really wasn't. I mean, he worked very hard at it for a really long time, and I couldn't be happier for him and his family that everything has worked out the way it did. Um, for the first 16 years, um, he and his manager, Roy Weissman, who's a good buddy of mine too, uh, they were on the verge of going under. I mean, you know, they barely were making it. They weren't profitable at all, really, uh, for the first 16 years. And then it finally turned around, a lot of it, with when he played at the Royal Albert Hall and Eric Clapton sat in with him. That was always a dream for him to do, to play at the Royal Albert Hall. And then Eric called and asked if he could sit in with Joe, which was a knockout. And so it's really a fantastic documentary. Congratulations to Joe, his family, uh, Roy Weissman, his manager, and uh, also Kevin Shirley, his producer. Um, just, they did a fabulous job. So gotta check it out, Guitar Man, Joe Bonamassa. January 19th, my buddy Frank Stallone's documentary is coming out. And I saw it at the premiere, and it's a really great documentary. And Frank is, is a very talented guy, and a lot of people didn't know this, but he was actually um, the one in the family that was considered the most talented uh, prior to Sly having all his success with Rocky and all that. So um, what happened was actually uh, Sly actually worked as Frank's roadie briefly for a while, you know, and then this stuff happened with the movie. And uh, it's, a, it's a great story of two brothers and, you know, one living in the shadow of the other one, but um, it, it's great. And they uh, really, you know, tell a fantastic story. And you see a whole bunch of people from back in the day, uh, from, uh, you know, Hall and & Oates and from uh, Richie Sambora and all these guys that he played with back in Philly. So it's really a good documentary and it's very well done. That's coming out uh, January 19th and I think it's already won some awards. So very, very cool. Um, I also wanted to talk about um, Bob Dylan. Uh, Bob Dylan uh, just recently sold his publishing uh, on all his tunes. And I want to congratulate Bob and his management. Uh, I know some of you uh, old hippies, and I was an old hippie myself, will probably go, uh, you know, well, uh, Bob sold out. But no, Bob wrote those tunes. He started from nothing, and it's his stuff. He's now 80 years old, and it's his prerogative to do uh, what he did. He's not only a fantastic songwriter uh, and a musician, but he's a great businessman, and he knew when the timing was right, and uh, the uh, rights were sold to UMG, Universal Music Group, and they really made a statement by buying it because they gave him a lot of money for it. And so my congratulations to everybody, and, uh, you know, it's a good deal overall, and Universal, I'm sure, will be doing a lot of stuff with Bob's tunes. And then two other things that I just wanted to say. Our repairman here, one of our repairmen, John Tucci, uh, his brother passed away um, the other day, and it was his younger brother. And
and he died of a sudden heart attack. So um, our condolences go out to John. He's one of the great guys, a really dear friend of mine for many years, besides being a great repairman. So we love John and we love the family and uh, our condolences go out to him. And one last thing, we just want to send out our condolences to Charlie Pride. Charlie Pride was uh, a fantastic uh, singer-songwriter, uh, musician, he broke the color barrier in the uh, in country music, and he was very, very well loved by everybody. And music sees no color, and that's the way it should be for everything. You know, I mean, for, I didn't know Charlie uh, myself, but I knew a lot of people that did know him, and everybody unanimous, unanimously said that he was a great guy. So, um, you know, our condolences go out to the Pride family and country music in general, because they're missing somebody who was a pioneer and did a lot of great stuff. So we love you guys. We're really happy that the uh, vaccine's starting to come in and uh, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, which actually is one of the lines in our tune, the year that never was that, and we wanna thank you guys for you know, downloading it from Spotify and all the places where you get tunes. Um, Joe Bonamassa played on it, did great. Michael Lemo played great. Grant Geisman played great. Nick played great. And we had all these other guys, you know, that also were involved, Stan Barons from War, and um, Lenny Castro played with Toto Stones, and he played with Joe Bonamassa for a while. And uh, Lamar Carter, great drummer, Travis Carlton, my buddy King Cotton, and Bobby Mando, Brandon Soriano from the store here. So it's a great concerted effort. Thank you guys for everything. We love you guys. Please be safe until this thing ends. And I uh, hope to see you guys at the end of the tunnel there, guys. Love you all.